This is Aisha Gaines, founder of Affirm on the Go and the Affirmation Wellness Conference. It's time to get well. This first video is about how to change your thoughts and make less anxiety-based decisions. The circle of thought has helped me to make less anxiety-based decisions. And for it to work, you have to take a moment to sit with your thoughts, to pinpoint exactly where your thoughts are coming from and what caused it. It's digging deep within yourself or doing the work. That's what some people call it. Signs, when you have signs that you may be experiencing anxiety, it is not wise to make decisions during that time. I know I'm experiencing anxiety because my breath starts to speed up to the point to where I have to deep breathe to calm down. Um, and I have to breathe from my diaphragm. So it's very intentional breathing. Um, I have to stand up. My voice cracks is as if I'm gasping for air or I get really sweaty. My triggers are people's tones, disappointing someone, being talked down to, yelling, not being able to get in touch with someone I care about, low funds, performances, rushing or being rushed, and negative projections of behaviors from other people. So stuff that I didn't even do. So for you, you first need to decide how do you know when you're experiencing anxiety and the things that trigger it. Then you need to learn helpful and healthy coping strategies. So far, mine are aerial arts, deep breathing, and sometimes with dr really dramatic sounds and using the circle of thought to pinpoint exactly what triggered my anxiety. With this kind of self-awareness, you can make healthy choices and communicate to others what you really need. The circle of thought is a component of CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. It allows you to pinpoint patterns of behavior. Identifying patterns of behavior allows you to change behavior. The circle of thought is centered around how we process life's events. And we can process life's, life's events through four different lenses. So that's past experiences, thought distortions, which are the ways we create thoughts that aren't true. We can process it through the negative or through the positive. Events are things that happen in our lives. It's life happening and they can be big or small. Major life changes like getting laid off, getting married or having a baby can be major. The same as experiencing trauma, being abused or losing a loved one. Small events can be traffic, losing your favorite shoe, someone being extremely rude to you, Someone bumping into you accidentally. Events happen all day, every day. And your brain logs these events as safe or unsafe. So when an event is happening or has happened, we process it and we compare it to other things in our mind. Past experiences, a thought distortion, which are the ways we create thoughts that aren't true through a very negative lens or through a positive one. And this happens all day constantly with different things. Um, after we process it, whether negative or positive, it determines what we think. So if you ever wonder where your thoughts came from, or how did I come up with that, or what did I think of that, it came from you. You create your own thoughts, and it's based on how you've processed a life event. Your processor, your lens, your filtering system creates your thoughts. And based on those thoughts, it determines your feelings or your emotions. So it's quite possible you could have a very strong or big feeling about a thought that isn't true. Or it can be true. But you created it based on how you see things. So sometimes people may not understand where you're coming from. And based on the emotions you have and the feelings you feel, it determines your behaviors. So if you have repeated patterns of anger or abuse or relationship patterns or your reactions at work or you lose friends or people are drawn to you, um, it all stems from your processor, your lens and your thoughts. This is how I realized I needed therapy. I had a very distinct relationship pattern 
that was very unhealthy. And I was in a cycle and I was feeling like I couldn't get out. And it wasn't, it wasn't fun at all. So through therapy, my counselor introduced me to the circle of thought. And I realized that through an assortment of past issues coming from my family, coming from past relationships, I had developed low self-worth, which in turn caused me to linger in unhealthy relationships. So once I pinpointed the source, I was able to start changing my thoughts and challenging my busted up processor. And so the goal became filtering more positively to have better outcomes. And it was life changing. Um, I was able to have healthier conversations with the people in my life. So here are some examples of how circle of thought can work. Example number one, this is negative. Event, your parents abandon you and you get adopted. Your processor tells you that no one loves you and everyone will abandon you. So your thoughts are be on guard, protect yourself because people can't be trusted. Your feelings are cold towards people, mean in relationships, and your behaviors are jumping from relationship to relationship, hiding your real feelings, starting fights, or even cheating. Positive. Event. Your parents abandon you and you get adopted. Your processor tells you, this is unfair, but I'm still alive and I'm well. Your thoughts are, some things happened to me in my past that I don't appreciate, but I won't let that stop me. I won't let that detour me. Your emotions are positive. They're open to possibilities. You have thoughts of starting your own family, graduating, starting a business, and your behaviors are healthier. Um, you're communicating your past to people in your life, but you have drive to move past, past it. You share in your relationships and you grow when necessary when things get tough. You see the difference? Example number two, negative event. You call your boyfriend, he doesn't answer. Your thoughts are, based on a past experience, he's cheating on me, I know it. Your emotions are anxiety-based. You're angry and you're frustrated. You're trying to figure out what to do. Your behaviors are, I'm pulling up to his house. Or when I talk to him, I'm going to let him have it. I'm going to tell him all my feelings. I'm going to tell him that he's not right. Positive. Event. You call your boyfriend. He doesn't answer. Your thoughts are, based on a past experience, I did have someone cheat on me. But this guy is very supportive. He normally answers. He doesn't really hide things from me. He does work a lot, so maybe he's tired. Your feelings are concerned but loving. You believe that your boyfriend is simply just tired. So your behaviors are, I'm going to send him a text. I'm going to send him a text that says, hey, gave you a call. Call me when you get a chance. Or, hey, hope you're getting some rest. Call me when you wake up. And you wait. You go find something else to do and you patiently wait. Best case scenario, he's really asleep. Great thing for you, you did not make a decision, an, 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 an anxiety-based decision. So your thoughts are up to you. And if you have enough evidence to support a negative thought or support something that's going on, by every means, remove yourself from that situation and deal with it as needed. But if you're one like me who found herself in a very repeated cycle of unhealthy relationships, then you have some mental work to do. Remember, peace is possible and we all have the ability to live life well, if we choose to. This is Aisha with a firm on the go and I hope this video was helpful to you. In the next video, we will be talking about thought, thought distortions.